Today I want to share a, a message on the a very familiar passage yet is something that is very important and particularly in this church we feel then that this is crucial and I would like to call them uh, essentials. Essentials that the church cannot do without. And we need to have this as part of our Christian journey. And it's uh, basically is what we all know as faith, hope, and love. So, of course, we all know 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Unfortunately, we only hear 1 Corinthians 13 on weddings. <laughs> and some of you don't attend weddings, so you never really hear very much about 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But it's really important that we, we realize that there is this great importance to love. And Paul has given a beautiful description of what love should be. But we want to say then that there are more to this than the description. Because in First Corinthians chapter 13, 13, it says that now this tree remains and basically, it says here, faith, hope, and love. And so this message this morning is about faith, about hope, and about love. And I've been looking for a topic for this message. And basically, I would think then that they will be the essentials of the Christian journey as part of our journey, and of course, the, the Word of God says then that this tree remains. Many things are considered keys to success in life, but in God's ruler of measurement, these are the three essentials that God will use to measure the church, faith, hope, and love. In the same way, when God measures your life, the ruler that he used to measure you will be based upon these three essentials, faith, hope, and love. And in these three areas, where are we in our lives? Let us pray. Gracious God, the Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for being able to be here this morning and to be able to share your holy word to once again, and Lord, we thank you, God, that truly you are great in our lives. And Lord, we confess once again, we need you in our lives more than ever before. And Lord, yes, when we were young, we feel that we are capable, we can be able to do many things on our own. But the older we get, the more we realize how much we need you. And Lord, we cannot do without you. And Lord, we cannot do without these three important elements of the church and of the Christian life. And basically, it's faith, hope, and love. All of this that we need in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I forgot how to use the projector. <laughs> Control. <laughs> I usually preach about PowerPoint nowadays. <laughs> and we often think then that faith, hope, and love are only mentioned in First Corinthians chapter thirteen. But as we get to search the search of scriptures, we realize that. Paul also amplified this in other passages, for example, in Colossians chapter 1, 
and in First Corinthians chapter, First Thessalonians chapter one, and it says here then that we give thanks to God the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. And uh, Paul, although he could not always be present with the Colossians, his prayer is always with them. And these are the things that he prayed for them that they should have in their lives. And he commended them for the faith they have in Jesus Christ and their love that they have for one another of which you have believed in the word of the truth. And then he talks about the hope that we have that should brought forth fruit as it is among you since the day you have heard and knew the grace of God. I've got to learn how to use this one. It's a new, new tool here. <laughs> and then in First Thessalonians, it says then that we give thanks to God. Again, in prayer, again, in thanksgiving. And then at the same time, mentioning in the beginning of a, a letter that he has to the people that he loved. And to these people that he loved, he says, yes, I've been praying for you. Yes, I'm giving thanks to God for you. And what are the things then that Paul talks about? And he talks about the work of faith. And then he talks about the patience of hope. And he talks about the love that they have for each other. So it's important then that as we get a look at first Col Col look at num firstly Colossians and then first Thessalonians, we see then a complement to this very familiar verse that we have in the first Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse thirteen. And these are the essentials that we will need to have in our Christian life as always. So, yeah, they are very necessary for Christian marriages, faith, hope, and marriages, and the love. And of course, we, at weddings, we often hear about this, and we often emphasize this, that, that these are things that are essential. Couples that get married must have faith in each other. They must have trust in each other. And they must not abuse or violate that trust. And uh, yes, this faith has to continue to prevail because when trust is lost in a marriage, it's very serious. It can break up the family and it can break up your future happiness and your complete future. Of course, hope. There are times couples go through difficult times and sometimes it's within the family. Sometimes the problems are external. And this element of hope is so essential because you always have to have a positive attitude and you always have faith in God and you must have patience in your faith to, that produces hope. And you have to keep trusting God and each other that there will be an outcome that God will produce despite of the challenging times. And of course, love, as we all know, must exist in all relationships. Then of course, I talk about the essentials, faith, hope, and love. This are uh, the way God measures the character and the ministry of the Christian. How good are you as a Christian? How do God look at you? God looks for faith. 
you must have faith in God. You must believe in God. But sometimes when it gets difficult to trust God, we must have hoped. And uh, it will produce a maturity in each one of us. Faith, hope, and marriage. And of course, this year the theme is Dream United. And these are, of course, the three things necessary to build unity within the church. So for Christians and for marriages, this is the order of things, faith, hope, love. But in Paul's writing to the Colossians and Thessalonians, we realize then that he has this a little bit different in terms of sequencing. And when we look at uh, Christian and, and marriages, yeah, faith, hope and love is correct. But for the church, you see a little bit of difference. The difference is, yeah, faith is still listed as first. So faith is very important for this church. Actually, our church is rooted in faith assembly of God. And I'm going to preach in the afternoon at faith assembly of God for the Bible school graduation. So, Maranatha started in the prayer room of faith. <laughs> the concept, I was there, I was one of the pastors of faith assembly. And, uh, yeah, Jimmy, Esther, and Michael Lee, and some of the others were from, from faith. And we started to build the foundation of this church from there. So this church is rooted in faith. But for the church, there's also a great emphasis. The battery is not working, I think. Love. And the, the listing is a bit different because it's this year, faith, love, and hope. And for our church, okay. then I think this is very good because faith must exist in our church. We started with nothing, we build it up to what we have today in terms of assets, in terms of people, in terms of talent, in terms of missions, in terms of outreach. And uh, love should continue to prevail in this church. It doesn't mean that because love is so important that we, 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 we stop to have faith, we need them together, faith and love. Love in the church, love among one another. And we'll talk a little bit about this later. And then hope. The church is really about Jesus, the living hope. Because Maranatha means a blessed hope. Jesus is coming back again. But it is not only that Jesus came down for us. It's also looking at the identity of the church. Who is the church? What is the church? The church is the place of God. The church is the people of God. The church is getting ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the church that is going up. There should only be one arrow going for us as a church. And that is up, up, up. And so there is no place for us to stay down, down, down. There is no place for us to stay depressed. There's no place for us to remain in low self-esteem. There is no place for us to be in a place where we feel no self-worth, that we feel useless, that we feel we are done, that we feel we are gone, we feel that the best of days are behind us. No, the church is a church that should be as strong and as positive as ever. And there is a church that always has hope. It's a church that is not going down. Yeah, Jesus came down for us. But it's a church that is going up. Amen. Because there is the rapture and the church will be caught up and we will be together with Jesus in the air 
and we will reign with Jesus forever and ever. It's a church that is not going to be pushed down by anyone, that will not be pressured by anyone, that will not be bullied by anyone, that will not be despised by everyone, because no matter how small we begin, and no matter how humble we remain, we should always know that God has a higher and a better place for us. And so this is the special DNA of this church. And this is the very essence and essential of this church. And there is a church that has hope. We should never land up in a place of hopelessness. There is no place for suicides. There is no place for deep depression. There is only a place and that is God is with us. God will favor us. God will heal our minds, our hearts, our bodies. And God will help us to be strong for Him forever. Amen. So let's talk about faith as an essential. Define faith. Hebrews 11.1 1, define faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is invisible. And so many people say, faith, well, I can't touch it. I can't hold it. But I tell you, you can touch faith and you can hold it because faith is a substance. It is going to materialize. It can turn to concrete. It can materialize because we believe that faith is the substance and the faith and hope of course go very closely together because faith needs hope to help us to keep believing but faith is needed for us to conquer the impossibilities of our lives and they will become evidence of things not seen and many people say where is the proof the proof is that God hears and answers prayer. And God has answered many of our prayers. Faith is essential because the Bible says that faith is necessary to please God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. That he that comes to God must believe. He that comes to God must have faith. And he that comes to God must know that God rewards those who diligently seek Him. The trouble is many of us give up too early. And we just think then that, you know, because we mumble a prayer, and we will see things realize in our lives. Faith sometimes is urgent, urgently needed, urgently demanded from us. But the, the times then that we have to wait a long time for something to realize. So the Bible says then that we have to recognize that God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him and of course Jesus commands us to have faith in God to have faith in God and also we must have faith in Jesus because Jesus says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me and we also have faith in the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses everywhere. And if Jesus was saying this in Singapore, he would have said, my witnesses in Singapore. In ASEAN. And Samaria, which is sometimes our best friend and sometimes our thorn in the flesh. 
and the recent election did not make Singapore a weeping boy anymore, but they used to. So maybe Samaria is Malaysia, maybe it's Indonesia because we went through confrontation with them. But uh, yeah, there is a Samaria in our country too, and to the ends of the earth. And God has called us to start where we are, locally, regionally, and then globally. So that's what we have done as a church. We have been a witness everywhere. We have even given Cuba, a far away place. I think none of us have been a rooftop for a church. We've given them the money to build. We have gone to the Tengaris people down in Indonesia, the people there, you know, were forced to become Muslim and they don't want to become Muslim, they want to become Christian. So for a number of years, I went to these people, the unrich people's group, and then helped them in the development and they start to build their faith in Christ and they remained strong and they, they were Hindus and they became Christians and they have not yielded to the pressure of becoming Muslim. We have gone to Bali and we have done the same thing. We have reached out to the local community and we have gone to, we have brought doctors and nurses there and we have reached out, I have taught the Bible schools there one in the morning, one in the afternoon, continuously and I have been there a number of times. Never for a holiday. <laughs> Always among the poor, the, the local community. And uh, it was a place when I first went, a place of bondage, difficult to preach. But today it's very easy for me to preach in Bali because it is a place where we are able to see a lot of conversions to Christ. So Hindus and Muslims coming to Christ. And we continue to be a witness there, despite the fact the church did not put a lot of money into Bali, but look, personally, I have been quite involved in the ministry there. And we believe that God is reaching people everywhere. We have a Korean community worshipping in our church. And last Monday, I met the pastor of the largest church in the world, 880,000 people in the church in South Korea. I've been there five times, pastor by Dr. Jo Yong Ki before he passed away. And uh, how come the church can be so big? They cannot be able to bring so many people into one building. So they have satellite churches. And the satellite churches started in South Korea. And they have gone around the world. I've visited about 20 churches in South Korea. I, I know their, their passion for prayer, their great faith in God, they believe in missions and they are reaching out to Koreans everywhere in the world. I believe that our church may not be that big but we can be effective in our own way and we will try our best to reach out to as many people as possible. So, yeah, there was a crisis the last two years. And uh, nobody taught us how to manage a crisis like that in Bible school. I'm a teacher in seminary, but I, I have never taken any lessons or given any lessons on how to handle a crisis like the one we went through the last two years. But nonetheless, we believe that, you know, we can have good coming out of it. So, yeah, we, we started to learn how to use Zoom. And so, bi-weekly, I'm now ministering to our church in Cebu, coaching their leaders. And uh, next year, we are going to multi-cities, Ilo Ilo, Passe, where we actually started a church. The church has become independent. Yeah, we're not supporting the church anymore, but yes, we are still the parents. So there's a different way the West approach mission and we in Singapore will have to define mission in our own way. Not that they are wrong, 
but they, they base it upon tasks. They give time frame, they give, you know, a way to force them to develop. But the, 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 the Eastern way basically is built about relationships. So therefore, even despite the fact that we are no longer supporting them financially, it, yeah, when they had a problem to the last typhoon, the, the winds came, it blew the, the, the roof away. So I raised some money from outside the church and uh, sent it to them to, to, to build their, their roof. So we, s we always maintain the relationship even though basically the mission policy is a little bit different because the Holy Spirit has come to be our friend and He has come to build relationship and our mission is about relationships and so we will always continue relationships whether it involve money or not. So that's how I look at admissions and uh, yeah, I have a different philosophy of missions from sometimes my counterparts in the West. But we believe in the Holy Spirit and believe God can use us to preach the gospel for the gospel did not come to us in word only but also in power and in the Spirit and in much assurance as you know what kind of man we were among you for your sake. So this is what I'll be preaching at Faith Assembly later on uh, during the seminary graduation. And we must believe God for results. Because even though you say, I am not a man of faith, I'm not a woman of faith, oh, you know, poor me, I'm so weak in my faith, I dare not believe God for many things in your life. But the, Jesus said that if your faith is only as small as a master's seed. I went to Israel and I brought master's seed back for you. Remember, I give you all each one. Where is it? <laughs> it's so small, it's so tiny, you know. Under your breath, you just get blown away. So small, so small, so small. But if you have faith of a master seed, you can say to the mountain, be removed and it will be moved. When I went to Japan with my family. I, I know my children are going to get married, so you know, we were, I thought it's important we spend time together. So we went to Mount Fiji. And Mount Fiji is very shy. <laughs> so <laughs> the crowds are always there. So you, you don't always be able to see the mountain. So you have a good chance of going there and not see the mountain at all. And I look at the crowd, I say, crowd, go! <laughs> and the crowd went. <laughs> and my family have some good pictures. You see, we are caught... I, I did not move the mountain. My faith is not enough to move the mountain. I only can move the crowd. <laughs> but you see, small as our faith may be, we can believe God for great things to come. So when I carry my grandsons, uh, two grandsons, I have a granddaughter coming, and I always say to my grandson all the good things. I won't say, you bad boy, la, you naughty boy, la, you are... I will make declarations over their lives for the best to come for them because we produce results. So coming before God in prayer is not about complaining to God about your parents, about your siblings, about your children, about you know, this person and that person, but it's really believing God is able to change things and faith in God I tell you, it's going to produce power and results. What we have today here in this building, I mean, every church is going down two years, you know. Some close down completely, no more existing anymore. But we take the time and we build, renovated this church, make it as beautiful as can be. And we continue to build our assets and continue to do missions and then we started Zoom services and then we, we learned Zoom and now I'm doing Zoom with Indonesia, I'm going to do it, 
I've been doing in Philippines, I've been doing in Indonesia, and India asked me whether I can do Zoom services for them. I say, <laughs> wait, India, multi-cities, you know, <laughs> I'll be preaching more, more often <laughs> on Zoom than I would here in Maranatha because I only hear preach here once a week, and on Zoom I might have to preach three times a week. But you see, if you let circumstances push you down, you will be down. But if you look for opportunity and you look for the, the sunrise during the sunset, and when you see light at the end of a tunnel, you will be able to see changes come into your life. So I don't care what you are going through, whether you're going through dark days or not, have faith in God because faith will produce power and results. So there are two kinds of faith, saving faith, believing in Jesus Christ, and then living faith. And for us, we have to live everyday faith by trusting God every day of our lives. Amen? Praise yeah. God. So is faith essential? Faith is essential for us. Then what is hope? Well, hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. And it will seem like impossible to happen, but it will happen in time. And, you know, sometimes we, we look at circumstances so much that we don't really see God. We see how big the problem is and we see how, God, how small our God is. And it should be the other way around, right? To see how big is our God and then to see how small is our problem in the light of God's greatness and power. So hope reduces the feeling of hopelessness. And in this world today, because there are so, so many people going through, through problems and uh, helplessness and pressure, I have a girl who used to attend our Sunday school at Jasmine Road. That's about <laughs> 30 over years ago. Grown woman now. And just started to be asking you know, for counsel because she just lost a job. And uh, so, it has nothing to do with our church. But in a crisis, she remember me. That I was once the pastor she looked up to when she was a small little girl and turned to me for help. I'm glad she, she looked for somebody because if somebody stays there depressed in a dark corner and cut everybody out of their lives and then begin to become so angry and so frustrated and so bitter and all that, it just destroy their lives. We are a people of hope. Amen. This is a church of faith. This is a church of hope. And uh, when we have hope, it reduces helplessness and increases happiness and reduces stress and improves our quality of life. That's a secular definition of hope. And so, you know, we need to have hope because we want to one outcome in our lives that makes our life better in some way. And even though, you know, things may be difficult, but we believe there will be better days, greater days coming ahead of us. And yeah, we went through many cycles of problem. Financially, we, we used to have a lot of problems. Brother Watson and Sister Linda, I always mention them because they were people who walked through with us when we have no money to pay rent, we have no money to, you know, deal our bills and all that and the money just miraculously come from outside it's just god's a supply and uh, you know instead of renting a place now we own two properties and rent another one and so you know there's always hope for us for something better for something greater if we don't lose our hope in God. And so for the child of God, hope can be as strong as 
what we have learned about God's goodness and faithfulness. There are many situations in our church and our, of our people. That there was no short-term solution. We heard Sister Teresa talk about her father. And at the time when I knew, heard about him, I never believed that he would become a Christian, but then he got baptized in our church. <laughs> We have Brother Keith's father who, who, who always stand in front of Jas- Jasmine Road and corner and Upper Thompson Road corner and argue about, you know, <laughs> his God, my God, his religion, my uh, argue, his religion. I say, no, no, I don't argue because argument is going to lead nowhere. But in the end, I baptize him. I baptize his wife. I did his funeral. I saw some of you writing in your cards. And remember in those good old days, we used to have cards at Holiday Inn and we fill up a card, we put in a prayer request and our attendance. And I saw a few, just to mention one or two. I mean, I saw Joanna's card, pray for my father, pray for my father, pray for my father. Is it possible for him to become a Christian? But but he did, you know, because they asked him, will you want to receive Jesus Christ as a personal savior? He can't even talk. You know, he was so sick. He was uh, on his lying bed. And uh, what happened is, he says, wrinkle your toe. And he wrinkled his toe. And he believed in Christ. Joanna's mother was, was out of a baptismal service at Garden Hotel at the time. Garden Hotel no more exists. And she said, I also want to be baptized. I say, no class, <laughs> do nothing. <laughs> you know, how? He said, I want to be baptized. I said, okay, can. You know, be baptized. You know, so, so Joanna is here. You know, her niece is here. Her sister is here. Slowly we are believing God one by one, trusting God that He will lead us to where we can become. Hope is a wonderful thing because when I look at those things 30 years ago, they can never happen. But today, they have happened. And we are talking about past tense, not future tense, because God is our hope. So never give up, no matter how dark, how difficult, how depressing your situation may be, never lose your hope in God. For us, is yeah, the days will become darker. But we know Jesus back is coming back again for us. And we always have the blessed hope. So our church is all about hope. But hope needs patience. First of Thessalonians, let's go back to this again. I remember without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of God, our Father. The patience of hope is required. And uh, we all are very familiar with Isaiah chapter 40. And we all know that verse so well that, that says, you know, that they that wait upon the Lord. So when I came, when I studied the book of Isaiah for master's degree, it took me a whole year to study Isaiah. It's not easy. You don't find me preaching from Isaiah very often even though I, I spent one whole year studying the book of Isaiah. But this is my favorite verse. And it says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And then they, in the, and K- NIV came out. At the time I used King James Version, then NIV came out. And they say, They that hope in the Lord. So I went to my professor and says, Look, you know, wait, hope, you know, are they the same thing? He said, Yeah, let me check it up. He has a doctorate on the book of Isaiah. And he has to go and start look it up again. And then he came, yeah, there is no problem because hope is waiting. Hope is waiting. So we need to have hope. They that hope in the Lord, those who wait in the Lord, shall renew their strength. And they will mount up as wings as eagles. They will walk and not be weary. They will run and not faint. 
The Bible even says here that even the young man sometimes will get tired. The young man will get weary. And so in our journey, you know, I, I think Isaiah time may be very stressful, but I will tell you the 21st century is very much more stressful. And they say, oh, you know, work from home. Some people thought, well, work from home means I can go and sleep, la, I can take my nap, la, I can go and do my housework in between, la, whatever. But those who work from home will tell you it's more stressful. The hours are longer, you know. And, and so, you know, we will never have it easy. Hope needs patience. But they that hope in the Lord will not be disappointed. Amen. So, hope needs patience. And so, if your prayer is not yet answered, I will say it is not yet answered. <laughs> it is not, not answered. It is not yet answered. Your prayers will be answered in due time if you have hope. And uh, when you are believing for the salvation of your loved ones, and others, and I could cite other examples about people who come to know the Lord through our church. But, uh, you know, we don't have the time for that. But I will tell you that in 30 years of ministry, uh, the impossible has happened. Salvation of loved ones and others can happen if you keep believing and keep witnessing, keep your testimony and keep shining for Jesus. And uh, yeah, some of us are praying for healing, some are praying for miracles. Hope needs patience. Continue to pray for your healing. Continue to pray for your miracles because God can sustain you and God can keep you. Amen? And some of us have other kind of wishes, desires in your life and uh, yeah, changes can occur if you have patience in God. So finally, let's look at love. There are four kinds of love. There's the, the love that we watch, go to movies to watch. Passionate love. Sometimes you don't know whether it's lust or love, but uh, yeah, there's a kind of love that is between people in love. There is the love among friends and equals. There are the love of parents and children. And there is a love that we all want to emphasize that is different from the rest. And there is agape love. So, yeah, agape love is the love that First Corinthians chapter 13 is talking about. The greatest of this is agape love. Why love is essential? Because God is love. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and Him in them. So God Himself is love. And to have love in our lives is essential because God Himself is love. And we are children of God. And as children of God, then we should be also children of love. So, define love again. What is true love according to the Bible? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. And it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, love always trusts, love always hopes, love always perseveres. So the connection between faith, hope, and love is very obvious. Because whenever faith is mentioned, hope is mentioned. Whenever hope is mentioned, believing is mentioned. When love is mentioned, also hope is mentioned. And love like 
hope will always persevere. Amen. So since we heard of your faith in Christ and your love for all the saints, so the church, in order to have dream united, will always have, must have this element of love for all the saints. So Billy Graham, Billy Graham came to Singapore 50 years ago. He, they have a Thanksgiving service. I wrote in a magazine uh, an article for to remember that event. Agape love is selfish love. The love God wants us of selfless love. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad you caught me there. <laughs> I almost want to say it's a deliberate mistake, but it's, a, it's, a, but it's not. A slip of the tongue. Akape <laughs> is Serveless love. That's good, right? <laughs> it's the love that God wants us to have. It's not just an emotion, but a conscious act of decision. My eyes are feeling. So, this is the kind of love that God has for us, and it's the kind of love that we should have for others. So, of course, then we have the great. The, the fundamental basic commandment of the great commandment that God, Jesus gave to us, which Paul amplified in the first Corinthians chapter 13. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. So love one another as I have loved you. So in conclusion, I want to say the Word of God is designed to invade every area of our life. So they should all be present in our life. Faith, hope, and presence. And so under new leadership in the church, and uh, some of you, I see renewal. Some of you may not be so, you know, accepting changes that come, but Unfortunately, we live in a world that, that, that change is sometimes necessary. So, it's just a matter of managing change. Great Britain tried to have a prime minister who won't change everything overnight and didn't last many days. So, we, we realized, yeah, change can be managed, but change is not only for the church. church change is also a part of our lives. And so, in every area of change in our lives, and some of us like change, and some of us don't like change, but whatever it is, whether it's corporate or it's personal, you, you will always experience change in your life. And the test is how do you manage this? The way you manage change is really how you exercise your faith, how you exercise your hope, and how you exercise your love. And so, you have to ask yourself, how does it work for me? Or how do it work for us? Or how does it work for your cooperation? How does it work for others? And the faith is about personal application. Hope is about personal application. Love is about personal application in our marriages and in our relationships. So, this morning as we conclude, let me ask, what are you believing God for today? What are the prayers in your heart that you are praying? What are you designed from God to happen in your life? And uh, what are the, the, the problems you may be facing, but what are the solutions to your challenges? And can God give you the wisdom? Can God give you the strength? And can God change circumstances in order then that you have breakthroughs in your life? And some of us, you know, we say, ah, I've been praying for so long. I've been hoping for so long. Oh, this will never happen. Oh, the salvation of my loved one. Oh, the, you know, uh, you know I, I, I never seem to be able to find a, a good job, the right job, whatever. But where are the areas that you need to restore your hope for tomorrow? 
What can you believe God for today? But how about hope for tomorrow? And also we ask ourselves how we can be more loving as a Christian, how we can be loving as a church to be more adaptable, to be more accepting, to be more tolerant, to be more open. And uh, so, yeah, we can be more loving as a church. There are two ways to deal with a problem. You can hit it, and you can punch it, and you can try to bring it down, but Really, the solution in the church is always love. So problems will always be there. You cannot run away from it. Circumstances are such. Before, you know, when I started this church, the changes are happening like this. Big, big circles. But it's zeroing very fast and very small, you know, circles. And it's just, you know, poof, so fast. How do you deal with all of this? In, Whatever happens, it will affect you. It will affect your relationships. And sometimes it will affect your marriages. But it is always how we can be lovingly talk about the problem. And we always have to have faith, always to have hope, always to have love. And I think all your problems can be resolved if only you can believe God and you will just hope because things will eventually get better. Things become clearer in time. And always remember, your tolerance is needed. Have love. Be kind to one another. Respect one another. And you will be able to go far in your Christian life and as a church. Amen? Praise God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful church. We thank you for these beautiful people. Lord, these wonderful people, Lord, that we have. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you, Lord, for the people. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful worship we always have. Thank you for the kind of people that we have in our church. Lord, we, we have good people and we have wonderful people and people that have been able to be faithful and fruitful in their lives and serving you for many years. And Lord, we just thank you, God, that we can see your wonderful hand in our lives. And Lord, we will keep believing you because, Lord, we have seen miracles after miracles. And so, Lord, sometimes they happen fast, sometimes they take time. But Lord, you have always answered our prayer and you have favored us and you have blessed us. And so I pray for this church, oh God, that you'll be a church of faith as we believe, God, for, Lord, the term of which, oh God, we serve and for, Lord, the time we have, oh God, living in this world. And, Lord, we do the best that we can for you. And, Lord, we are going to believe you, oh God, that better days are coming for our church. Greater things are coming for our church. And Jesus, you say, greater work shall we do. And Lord, we shall see this come to pass. Lord, we will continue to have hope in you, O oh God. Because this is a church of the blessed hope. This is a church that is called Maranatha. This is a church of God who will never, 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 never give up. Because God, you never give up on us. We will never give up on you. Lord, we will always have hope in our lives because no matter how dark and no how difficult, Lord, we are going through all that this season of time, God, there is a change of season coming for your people that, Lord, will spell glory to God. They will declare glory to God. They will say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And Lord, help our church to stay loving as a united church. Lord, there's no problem we cannot solve together. There's no issue we cannot handle and talk about in a loving way. There is no place, oh God, for 
resentment, there is no place for quarrel, there is no place for big disagreement. Lord, there is always time for us to have a cup of coffee and tea and discuss issues. And Lord, in marriages and all other relationships, it's the same way, O oh God, no matter how big, how difficult, how complex the situation may be, Lord, we know you are the solution of our lives. And we can handle all problems in a loving manner. And Lord, we also thank you, God, that Lord, this church will not give up on faith. This church will not give up on hope. And this church will not give up on love. Because faith, hope, and love will be the essentials in your church. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray.